Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Today we are at Hearing Matters. Blindness separates us from things. Deafness separates us from people. Beautiful quote from Helen Keller. I'm being joined by Rob Hamilton. He's kind of the head guy here. And there's so much truth in that. You don't necessarily think about things, but when you can't hear, things really change for you. For sure. Um, so that quote from Helen Keller really talks about hearing as our most social of all our senses. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really, really important that we hear well as we age. And that's really what hearing well matters refers to, is the idea that uh, hearing as we age is really, really important. It's important for our cognitive abilities. It's important for our balance. And mm -hmm. it's also um, important for our um, social interactions and and our fatigue uh, levels and depression, et cetera. So if you think you might have hearing loss, it's always a good idea to get it checked. Now, do you have to go to a specialist or can you come to places like this where you can get your hearing tested and figured out? Yeah, uh, you don't need a referral at okay. our clinic. Uh, we do take physician referrals, okay. but um, if you think you might be having one of the signs of hearing loss, like difficulty hearing in a group or a noisy room or difficulty hearing the TV or uh, asking others to repeat themselves, then you just call us up and we typically will see you for a hearing test um, and it's free, mm -hmm. um, usually within uh, that week. So this is not to be confused with selective hearing, right? <laughs> sure, that's what a lot of <laughs> husbands have with, the, with their wives. But, I can uh, hear just fine, don't tell her though. <laughs> there is a big difference between hearing and listening for sure, but yeah. what we test is really how, how the patient hears. How, and how long does a hearing test normally take? Um, usually less than an hour. Okay. And um, like I said, at our clinic, it's free. So mm -hmm. we would encourage you to do it. Yeah. We send the report to the family doctor. And of course, it's kept in the health file there. Do you take any age or do you have to be a certain age? Uh, we do all ages here down to about five. Okay. Um, if, if the patient is less than five years old, then, uh, then we re usually refer them to a pediatric yeah. uh, audiology clinic. Okay, great. Well, coming up, we're going to be taking a look at some of the new hearing aids. We'll talk a little bit more about the practices that they do here at Hearing Well Matters. Okay, well, Rob has taken us back into where we do the hearing tests. It's a great space. It's a big space. I always feel like when I do a hearing test, I'm going to feel claustrophobic. <laughs> but you don't. Well, uh, right. The... the, the, the um the soundproof booth here is quite large. It, mm -hmm. it accommodates a wheelchair, but we also have a, a window in the door to help people who might feel a little claustrophobic. Because mm -hmm. it's also kind of a dense room as well. There's a lot of equipment, um, and we do that because of all the different types of, of tests that we do uh, as, part of the, as part of the battery. Okay, so take us through a little bit of the process. So right now, Meredith uh, Joachim, um, our other clinician at the clinic, is doing a hearing test on Josh and sitting in the sound booth. I think she's doing um, a test called the speech and noise test, which is measures how well the patient hears with speech against background noise. This mm -hmm. is the most common complaint that we get in the clinic that when somebody goes out to a restaurant, they're just not able to make out what their dining right. companions are saying. So uh, so we do test for that. Mm -hmm. In this test, uh, the patient is given some different um, words to hear and the background noise gets ever louder oh. over the course of the test. So it really measures how well they do um, hearing um, against background noise. That's really interesting. What other tests would you run? Um, well, uh, the, other, the other set of tests that we do are called pure tone tests, mm -hmm. where we give them different frequency of, of beeps or pure tones mm -hmm. in order to see uh, what their, uh, their uh, hearing thresholds are. Okay. And so that could tell us how severe the hearing loss is, um, even where the hearing loss is happening in the hearing system. Really? You can get that specific? You can find out when you look at an ear and the inside of an ear where the hearing loss is coming from. Correct. Huh. Through, through these tests. And then you chart everything and then you kind of get to go on one of these charts of familiar sounds and kind of see where you are. Correct. So this is called an audiogram. It's a way of capturing what we do on the hearing test. But this, this graph is able to tell us very precisely uh, how severe a patient's 
hearing loss is and then how they do um, hearing speech. I like how you kind of like, not dumb it down for us, but make it, put it into simplest terms. If you can hear a dog barking, you're here. If you can hear the piano, you're here. If you hear an airplane, you're here kind of thing. Correct. <laughs> the most common type of age-related hearing loss involves a high-frequency hearing loss, meaning that you can't hear um, sounds of speech as well as you used to. Right. Okay. So if you need to get your hearing tested, come to Hearing Well Matters. Hearing tests are free Hear, uh, and they're painless, right? He's not doing anything but wearing a set of headphones and clicking a button. Correct. It's so easy. Yeah. Everyone needs to be getting this done. Okay. Coming up, we talk about hearing aids and other technology that they do have here at the clinic. Can you hear me now? How about now? Look what we're going to do. Well, we're not going to do exactly this, but we're going to talk about getting a customized mold uh, of your ear for hearing aids because there's a lots of different types of hearing aids that people can get these days. Correct. Um, there's two broad um, styles of hearing aids. Uh, the first one is called um, receiver in the canal, okay. and that's the type that fits over the back of the ear, mm -hmm. and then this part just fits right into the ear like this. So little. Um, they are little, and they're very discreet. Um, these are the most common ones that we dispense, about 80 or 85 percent of uh, patients who get hearing aids for the first time get this style. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, uh, these are very convenient and these um, um, fit right on the ear without uh, any customization. That's cool, okay. Okay. The second uh, set is uh, what are called custom hearing aids and they're shaped like this. They're, they're custom shaped exactly to the shape of the ear of the patient and it requires that, that we do an impression of the ear. Um, and so that's what we have uh, Meredith and Josh doing uh, this morning is, uh, is an impression of Josh's left ear. So what Meredith is going to be doing here is spraying some mold material into cool. Josh's ear. And um, that looks kind of fun. <laughs> after, after a few minutes, that will set exactly to the shape of Josh's ear, and that will then allow us to um, make hearing aids exactly to the shape of Josh's ear. These are called in the ear or in the canal style because they fit right in the ear. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> We've had something like that, like in news, we have to wear an IFB in our ear, so we've had the option to get them custom made to our ear as well, or just have something kind of stick in, but, you know, you, there's no going wrong with this, for sure. Now, why would pick someone pick one over the other? Um, it's usually due to uh, factors like the severity of the hearing loss, um, how manual, how much manual dexterity the patient has mm -hmm. in getting the hearing aids on uh, the ear. Mm -hmm. So with more severe hearing loss, we want to be able to lock the sound into the ear, mm -hmm. and so a custom hearing aid makes more sense. Or if a patient has difficulty manipulating um, things onto their ears, mm -hmm. then we might go with a custom that fits it's right in easier. the ear and is easier to get in. Okay, well, coming up, we are going to be talking about some of the accessories that you can get for your hearing aids. I mean, it is not the hearing aids that your grandparents used to wear. These will take phone calls. You can listen to music. It's pretty much like having a headset on. Lots more coming up from Hearing Matters in Burlington on Morning Live. So we are now removing the mold from Josh's ear. So, like, it literally took minutes to get this done. It is such a simple and easy process. And now we have an exact replica of Josh's ear. That's so cool, Rob. It happens so fast. <laughs> yeah, and that's an excellent mold. Great job, Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> okay, talk to us about some of these accessories that we can use. Right, so one of the big uh, advances in the hearing aids in the last couple of years has been the um, uh, Bluetooth capability where the hearing aids are actually able to talk to the um, um, to, uh, to medical devices or mm -hmm. to digital devices. So, for instance, this one is, uh, this is an app that will, um, where the, um, the, it allows the patients to control uh, and have some personal um, ability to navigate the hearing aid. That's so, so cool. Uh, we put four different programs on, on this particular set of hearing aids, and this one is all around. It's great for 80% um, of most uh, settings. But this one here in noise helps the patient hear better in uh, background noise, like in a restaurant yeah. setting. Uh, this one's very good for TV and music. And then finally, uh, this last program is very good for outdoors. 
when if the patient's hiking or walking or golfing or sailing. So if you're at a concert and the music's too loud, can you turn your hearing aid so you can't hear it as well? Very much so, yeah. <laughs> I love and, that. And it, it even has an equalizer on it like, so you can, can tune. Can I get them just for concerts? Can I do that? <laughs> um, they, we can wear them in many different situations, but, but music is a, is a great... Uh, uh, stimulus for hearing. So yeah, for of course. Sure. Okay, so what's this? What's this? What's this? So these are some other accessories that are available through the Bluetooth technology. This one's called a TV streamer. It allows uh, the TV audio signal to be streamed directly to the patient's hearing aids. Oh, wow. Which means that... It's like uh, plugging in headphones. Exactly. Yeah. They don't hear any interference from uh, the air conditioning or, Husband or, or the wife. furnace or, or others <laughs> in the household, right? So it really helps them hear directly, That's cool. which is great. This uh, this is called a remote microphone. This is a great little addition uh, in that restaurant setting where there's a lot of background noise and mm -hmm. you want to be able to hear uh, your dining companion better. Mm -hmm. uh, the dining uh, companion wears the microphone and it picks up the sound of the voice and beams it right to the hearing uh, oh, aids. Oh, that's super cool. So that's that's a great little addition there. And then this accessory is a remote control. It has many of the same functions as, as the iPhone app, uh, but again, can help the patient navigate the hearing aids. Incredible, technology has come so far. It has. What's next for your world? Well, uh, May is a very important month uh, in the hearing uh, aid world. Mm -hmm. uh, May is Better Hearing Month, and okay. so that's one reason why, why we invited CHCH to our clinic today to help celebrate Better Hearing Month. Better Hearing Month. All month of May, come here, get your hearing test. It's not going to cost you anything. As you can see, Rob is an expert. He knows everything there is to know about hearing aids, the different types you can get, and the amazing accessories that go with it where you can hear or choose not to hear whenever you want to. All right. Thanks so much, Rob, for having us. Thanks, Emily.